Today's video is sponsored by my Twitch channel again. I stream Team Fortress 2 on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern, among other games on other days of the week. Check it out at the link in the description. Thanks. On to the video. In the current year of 2020, we have been blessed with countless wonderful technological innovations. We have smartphones, refrigerators that connect to the internet, computers the size of a stick of chewing gum, and all sorts of other awesome stuff. However, one thing that has only seemingly stayed stagnant throughout the years is internet speeds across most of America. In a world where gigabit internet and fiber optics are becoming a reality, actual deployment of these innovations is slow and costly, leaving lots of people just completely in the dust. Hell, up until a couple of years ago when Spectrum came in and bought out my former ISP, I was rocking a blazing fast 1 megabit upload speed and 10 megabit download speed. It was really bad. It's been almost four entire years since I released a video titled Intermittent Connection, where I proceeded to rant for almost five minutes straight about having an inconsistent internet connection that caused endless ping problems for me whenever I played TF2. Unbeknownst to me at that time, the issue I was referring to was called buffer bloat, which is a phenomenon that occurs and spikes your ping when your internet connection is being maxed out by other devices on the network, or if you're just completely saturating the connection with a background download or something. When you're stuck on a slow connection like I was, it's not very hard at all for one device to completely saturate your entire connection. I was angry, sad, and then hopeless. Up until I discovered a neat little piece of software called DDWRT that changed my life for the better. DDWRT, developed by Brainslayer in Germany, is a Linux-based open-source piece of firmware available for a plethora of consumer routers aimed at implementing new features that the manufacturers themselves left out, essentially transforming said consumer routers into prosumer routers. The router I was using, and actually am still using, is the Netgear WNDR4300, which has a super bare-bones firmware out of the box. By installing DDWRT, I was able to utilize one of its many useful features, quality of service, to stabilize my network and play video games and upload videos without any interruptions, even with my slowest balls to begin with connection speeds. With quality of service, you can directly control which devices on your network get the most priority, and you can set a buffer so that your internet connection never gets maxed out. In theory, this buffer and traffic management should mean that ping remains stable. Before I get into what I did with my router and DDWRT to fix my crappy internet connection, I need to get this disclaimer out of the way. DDWRT is not supported and should not be installed on equipment that you have not purchased yourself, and I will not be held accountable for any issues that may arise while you use or install it. If you're using or renting out an ISP-provided modem and router combo unit, or separate devices, you'll need to get your own router in order to follow the steps I show here. Additionally, each and every router model is unique, and the steps for installation can and will differ between them. If you fail to follow the instructions properly for your specific model of router, you might end up with an expensive paperweight. Just make sure to follow the directions carefully if you choose to do this. Again, I take no responsibility for any damage caused to you or your equipment. Alright, without any further ado, here we go. Before I got into DDWRT to fix my crappy connection, I needed to get into actually installing it. First, I headed to the DDWRT website at ddwrt.com and checked out the router database. While this isn't necessarily kept up to date as much as it probably should be, I entered my router's model number into the search box and found out that it was supported. Because the router database is outdated, I knew it was highly likely that a newer version of the DDWRT firmware was probably available for my router, so I headed to the other downloads page and found the latest beta build. Inside, I found a folder labeled with my router's model number again. So I I navigated into it and downloaded the factory firmware image. Next, I held my router's reset button until the lights started to blink. This is just to ensure the router would go back to factory settings. I then went to my router's local IP address by entering my gateway's IP into my web browser and was greeted by the stock Netgear firmware. Once I logged in, I went to the administration page and found the firmware upgrade section. All I had to do at that point was upload the DDWRT firmware image I found, hit upload, and confirm the upgrade on the next page. After a short installation period and a quick reboot, my router was up and running again on the DDWRT welcome page. Before you enter your desired username and password, as you might be kind of excited to, you'll want to perform what's called a 30-30-30 reset on your router. In short, this clears the router's non-volatile RAM and makes it so that DDWRT doesn't erroneously read remnant data from the stock firmware and get all confused. 
To perform this reset, start holding down your router's reset button. After 30 seconds pass, hit the power button or unplug it. After another 30 seconds, power the router back up again. After a final 30 seconds, unplug the router again and stop holding down the button. Once you power your router back up, you'll be ready to go. Navigate to the DDWRT default IP of 192.168.1.1 in your web browser, and then enter the admin name and password you want to use to access the router control panel. Once you're done with that, you'll have access to every option under the sun to play around with. Before I got to the option I installed DDWRT for in the first place, QoS, I had to take care of a couple other basic things like DNS and Wi-Fi. Under the main setup tab, I left most of it as it was, except I changed the DNS servers, or domain name service servers, to point to Google's, and then I changed my time zone under the NTP server to match the location where I reside. Nowadays, I use Cloudflare's DNS, 1.1.1.1, but Google's public DNS is still a very good option too. Practically anything is going to be better than your ISP provided default DNS. When I first installed DDWRT almost four years ago, IPv6 wasn't an option. But now that it's present in the latest version, I enabled it and set it up to use Cloudflare's IPv6 DNS servers. This helps to future-proof things a bit, as the IPv4 we know and love will eventually become deprecated. People have been saying it for like 20 years, but it'll happen eventually. With that out of the way, it's time to set up my wireless networks. By default, DDWRT broadcasts 2.4 and 5 gigahertz signals without any security or encryption. So it's vital to change the settings here and reboot the router before doing much else. I recommend you set the SSIDs and passwords to be the same as they were before your DDWRT upgrade, so that the other people and devices using your network won't have to adjust their settings in order to reconnect. Additionally, you can also increase the transmit power of your router in order to increase your wireless range. I found good luck with 26 dBm and 24 dBm respectively. Finally, it was time to set up QoS. I navigated to the QoS setup page and hit enable. Next, I changed the queuing discipline to FQCODL and set the upload and download speeds to about 90% of what I had at the time, so 9000 kilobits download and 900 kilobits upload. FQCODL can be a bit computationally intensive, but it seems to work just fine in the WNDR4300 in my testing. I hit save and rebooted the router one last time. Then I rebooted my modem too. Then I jumped into TF2 to play a couple rounds and see if the switch to DDWRT and FQCODL made the difference. And the answer? Well, it was a resounding yes. Thanks to my router's newly installed custom firmware, I was successfully able to utilize QoS, a feature previously not offered on my specific model of router, in order to manage traffic on my network and ensure my gaming performance and voice chats would remain silky smooth. Even though my internet speeds aren't nearly as horrible as they used to be, I'm still using the same exact router with DDWRT and QoS in order to keep my network stable, up to date, and tailored exactly to meet the needs of me and my family, at least until I move out within the next couple years. And that's why I bought another WNDR4300 with DDWRT. In conclusion, assuming your router supports it, DDWRT is an awesome way to breathe life into an old router and make your internet experience as consistent and smooth as possible. Why waste hundreds of dollars on routers that look more like a spider and won't necessarily fix your issue, when you can basically just install Linux on your current router and get even more options and functionality? This has been a video by Air. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give it a like if it helped you out, and leave a comment with your own experience. Also, be sure to catch me live with TF2 on Twitch on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. Peace. Dude, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh <What>? my- <laughs>